Hi guys, it's Mrs Giles here. Uh, I hope you've all had a lovely weekend and you've had a good week so far. Um, here with an active read lesson and we are still reading The Enchanted Wood by Enid Blyton, who is a woman. And we're going to be reading Chapter 5, The Roundabout Land. I've got a couple of special guests listening today. I'm wondering if you can spot them in the background. Now I'm wondering if you might be able to tell me why I have them in the back in the background. Mm. Okay. Okay, let me find chapter five. Here we go. Chapter five, the roundabout land. One big broad branch slanted upwards at the top of the faraway tree. Joe climbed onto it and looked down, but he could see nothing for a white mist swirled around and round. Above him, the enormous thick white cloud stretched, with a purple hole in it, through which the topmost branch of the faraway tree disappeared. The children felt tremendously excited. At last they were at the very top. Joe carefully pulled himself up the final branch. He disappeared into the purple hole. Beth and Franny followed him. The branch came to an end and a little ladder ran through the cloud. Up the children went and before they knew what had happened, they were out in the sunshine in a new and very strange land. They stood on green grass. Above them was a blue sky. A tune was playing somewhere, going on and on and on. It's the sort of tune a carousel or a roundabout plays, Joe, said Beth, isn't it? It was, and then suddenly, without any warning at all, the whole land began to swing round. The children almost fell over, with the swing round beginning so suddenly. What's happening? said Beth, frightened. The children felt terribly dizzy. Dist for trees, distant houses, hills and bushes began to move around. They too felt themselves moving, for the grass was going round as well. They looked for the hole in the cloud, but it had disappeared. The whole land is going round and round like a roundabout, cried Joe, shutting his eyes with dizziness. We've passed over the hole in the clouds. We don't know where the topmost branch of the faraway tree is now. It's somewhere beneath this land, but goodness knows where. Joe, but how can we get back home again? cried Franny in a fright. We'll have to ask someone for help, said Joe. The three began to walk away from the patch of green field in which they were standing. Beth noticed that they had been standing on a ring of grass that seemed darker than the grass around. She wondered why this was, but she had no time to say anything, for really it was dreadfully difficult to walk properly in a land that was going round and round like a proper carousel all the time. The music went on and on too, hurdy-gurdy, hurdy-gurdy. Joe wondered where it came from and where the machinery was that worked the strange roundabout land. Soon they met a tall man singing loudly from a book. Joe stopped him, but he went on singing. It was annoying. Hey diddle diddle, ho diddle, round and round and round, shouted the man, while Joe tried to make himself heard. How can we get away from this land? Joe shouted. Don't interrupt me, hey diddle ho diddle, sang the man, and he beat his time with, the, with his finger. Joe caught hold of the bony finger and shouted again. Which is the way out of this land? And what land is it? Now you've made me lose my time, said the tall man crossly. I shall have to begin my song again. What is this land, please? said asked Franny. It's roundabout land, said the tall man. I should have thought anyone would have guessed that. You can't get away from it, 
it goes round and round always and only stops once in a blue moon. <gasps> oh, there must have been a blue moon when we climbed onto the land, groaned Joe. It had certainly stopped then. The man went off, singing loudly, Hey diddle ho diddle round and round and round. Silly old round and round, said Franny. Really, we do seem to meet the most peculiar people. What I'm worried about is getting home, said Beth. Mother will be anxious if we are not back before long. What shall we do, Joe? Let's sit down under this tree and have a bit more to eat, said Joe. So they sat down and munched solemnly. That means a bit downhearted, sad. Hearing roundabout music going on all the time and watching the distant hills and trees swinging round against the sky. It was all very strange. Presently, a pair of rabbits lolloped up and looked at the children. Franny loved animals and she threw a bit of cake to them. To her surprise, one of the rabbits picked up the cake in its paw and nibbled it like a monkey. Thanks said the rabbit. It's a change from grass. Where do you come from? We haven't seen you here before and we thought we knew everyone here. Nobody knew ever comes to roundabout land. And nobody ever gets away, said the other rabbit, smiling at Franny and holding out its paw for a bit of cake too. Really? said Beth in alarm. Well, we are new to it, for we only came up about an hour ago. We came up the faraway tree. What? cried both rabbits at once, lopping up their long ears in amazement. Up the faraway tree, did you say? Goodness, you don't mean to say that's touching this land. Yes, it is, said Beth. But I expect, as this land is swinging round and round, that the topmost branch might be almost anywhere underneath it. There's no way of finding out. Oh, yes, there is, said the first rabbit excitedly. If we burrow down a little way and make a hole, we can see whereabouts the faraway tree is underneath, and we can wait for it to come round again when the land swings above it. Well, we came up from the tree just where the grass was darker than the rest, said Biff. I noticed that. Do you suppose that as roundabout land swings round, it will come back to the same place again? And we could slip down the topmost branch? Of course, said the rabbits. We can easily burrow down that green patch of grass and wait for the land to turn around just over the tree again. Come on! Quickly, there's no time to lose. All of them jumped up and sped off. Beth knew the way and so did the rabbits. Soon they were back in the field where the ring of dark grass stood. There was no opening now, leading through a cloud down to the tree. It had gone. The rabbits began to dig quickly. Soon they found, soon they found the ladder that led upwards. Then they made such a big hole that the children could see down it to a large white cloud that swirled below the roundabout land. Nothing there yet, said the first rabbit, getting a handkerchief out and wiping his dirty front paws. We must wait a bit. I only hope the land hasn't swung on and passed the faraway tree altogether. The roundabout music went on and on. And then suddenly it began to slow down. One of the rabbits peeped out of the hole below and gave a shout. The land has stopped going round and the faraway tree is nearby, but we can't reach it. The children peered through the ground, through the cloud below the ladder and saw quite clearly that the faraway tree was very near, but not near enough to jump on. Whatever were they to do? Now, don't try to jump, warned the rabbits, or you'll fall right through the clouds. What shall we do? asked Beth in despair. We must get on the tree before we swing away again. 
I've got a rump, said one of the rabbits suddenly. And he put his hand into a big pocket and pulled out a yellow rope. He made a loop in one end and then threw it carefully at the topmost branch of a nearby tree. It caught and held. Good. Franny, slip down the rope first, said Joe. I'll hold this end. So Franny, rather afraid, slid down the yellow rope to the tree. And then, just as she got there, the roundabout music began to play very loudly and quickly, and the roundabout land began to move. And quick, quick, shouted Franny, as the land swang nearer to the faraway tree. Jump, jump! They jumped, and the rabbits jumped after them. The roundabout land swang off. The big white cloud covered everything. The children and the rabbits clung to the topmost branch, and looked at one another. We all look like monkeys on a stick, said Joe, and they all began to giggle. My goodness, what an adventure. I vote we don't come up here again. But as you may guess, they did. Ooh, I enjoyed that chapter, children, did you? I'm really enjoying reading this story. It's so interesting. It's so exciting. Ooh, right, now, I have some questions for you okay that you would that you can answer you can go back and watch the video again you can pause the video see if you can find the evidence see if you can find the answer to the questions some of you might be able to remember the answers you can discuss them with your brother or your sister or an adult whoever you are with okay so let me read you chapter five the roundabout land questions so question one children the branch of the tree is described as big and broad. What does the word broad mean? When the children, sorry, number two, when the children arrive in the strange new land, why did they almost fall over? Number three, can you describe or draw what a carousel looks like? Number four, what was Beth's worry? Why was she worried? Question five. The, the text says, Presently, a pair of rabbits lolloped up and looked at the children. What does presently mean? And what do you think lolloped means? Question six. Who helps the children escape roundabout land? Here are the questions. I hope you can see them. I'm going to post them as well so you can, when I post them, you'll be able to read them. And I have a drawing challenge at the back, at the bottom, children. And my drawing challenge this week is can you design your own land that could be found at the top of the far away tree? And I came up with some really fantastic ideas. I would really like to go to maybe a yummy land full of sweets and donuts and cookies. Mm. And I'd also, I love, I'd love to be a, a farmer. So I, I came up with a farming land as well. I wonder what kind of lands you'd like to come up with. Maybe you could draw your land and you could post me a picture of what you think your land would look like. Thanks, guys. And the, and you may have noticed, yeah, the visitors we had today was, we've got my cuddly Darth Vader and my pophead Darth Vader. And that's because this week it is May the 4th. Uh, which is Star Wars Day. May the Fourth be with you. May the Force be with you. And I love Star Wars. All right, guys. Bye.